Right. Now, time. Today is what? Sunday, the fifteenth of uh, January. January, two thousand and twenty-three. Uh, we're in London, and today we're going to do an interview about probably the most famous sound system, reggae sound system, to come out of Derby, um, Enforcer Sound System. And today we have Lloyd and his brother Cliff, uh, who were basically the founders and the owners of Enforcer Sound System from Derby. Guys, thank you very much for allowing me to take a chunk out of your Sunday. Thank you. Lloyd, thank you for all the harassment you've put up <laughs> from me, being this fan who's obsessed with Enforcer, mm. all the phone calls and harassment I've been giving you. But no problem. <laughs> no problem at all. <laughs> right, so basically I wanted to talk today about Enforcer. So if you want to introduce yourselves. Well, like, like my... My, I'm Lloyd, um, an Enforcer I Fi. We was one of the best sounds in Derby. That come out of Derby. Yeah. Um, we also you got to we give thanks to um, Castro because he was our main competitor. Yeah. In the sound system, obviously he started off before us, mm. but um, on the old. Um, Enforcer came along and we took that that title away from him. All right. Yeah, I'm Cliff. I'm, uh, Enforcer started well before we became known to everybody. Um, started basically early in early seventies. Yeah. Um, where. We played uh, at uh, basically house parties in a small way, mm. um, really birthday parties and so yeah, before yeah. anything yeah. else. And yeah. as we became known um, and got better at it, um, mm. we just sort of went uh, went out into the wider world with a sound system, then right. playing up blues and mm. so mm. forth. Mm. So you're the two founder members, brothers as well, mm. yeah. Mm. Um, so were you were you born in Derby or I did... was I was I was born in England uh -huh. in Derby yeah and um, my brother yeah I mean I was born in Jamaica but it's only to the fact that our mum went pregnant to Jamaica at that time yeah. for a holiday mm -hmm. and uh, yeah I was born in Jamaica we came back within two years to England, so really I'm more English than Jamaican. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your parents came from Jamaica. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What year did they settle in, in Derby? Well, my dad came about 55. 55? That's quite early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah my mum came probably, yeah, about 56. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wicked, wicked. So... You've come to to Derby. Which sorry, which area of Derby did did we, did your family um, move to? Cambridge, isn't it? Cambridge. Yeah, it's still part of Normanton. Really. It's Normanton. I mean, it's we, Normanton, yeah. really. But the we, Normanton area, we, of Derby. Area, yeah. We, yeah, we we li we live down Molyneux Street. Uh huh. Um, which is part of Pear Tree. No, part of um, Normanton. Yes, yeah, um, you know what I mean. Mm. Um, but um, Cambridge, we used to live. On Molyneux Street. Yeah. And for those people who don't know Derby, Normanton and the adjoining Pear Tree area mm -hmm. are basically the main ethnic mm -hmm. minority area of yes. Derby. Yes. Uh, at first it was Caribbean uh, immigrants who moved to the area mm -hmm. uh, and then or later on you had lots of people from India and Pakistan. So yes. Derby, uh, Derby's main Afro-Caribbean area was, was at that time Normanton yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, Pear Tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. Definitely. So, I mean, you you obviously come to come to Derby. So, when you were growing up, mm. what were your kind of um, memories of the sound system scene in Derby? I mean, the older generation well, to you, was there a big sound system scene? Was well, there a blues well, scene? There, there was there was a, um, a sound system in Derby before we yeah. we were we came along uh -huh. um, called Castro. Castro. Uh, and you, you, you also had Big Six. And um, 
the one from Burton as well. Um, Big Six. Um, can't remember that one, but yeah, there was there was a, a few sounds around at that time, mm. um, and we used to go. Uh, we I used to go to um, the Havana Club. Yeah, and listen to Lloyd Lloyd um, Castro. Yeah, yeah, and um, you know. So what year was this when you started getting, you know, when, when you became aware of sound systems? What sort of years of year are we talking it's about? Roughly? 70s. Yeah, that was early 70s. 70s. Early, early, early 1970s. Yeah, early 1970s. Mm. Um, it wasn't nothing that we, although we heard of it and knew about it, it wasn't something we said, yeah, we're going to build a sound system and, mm. you know, it, it just happened. Yeah. Organically, right? Yeah, yeah. organically, yeah. 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 Well, yeah, it was only Castro, really. That it was only right. Castro was our main. And they were your was they were they your parents' generation of people who started. Yes, them? yes, yes. Oh, I'd, okay. say, I'd say he was a. Uh, so he must be around from the sixties. Yeah, he was. He, the, the, he was probably around from the sixties, isn't he? And yeah. earlier, mm. you know what I mean. So Castro uh, around in the sixties was the main kind of like sound system. Yes, yes, in, yeah, in, in, in Derby. In Derby. Okay. Yes. Yes. And growing up in Normanton and Peartree when you were youths, mm. um, was it mainly Caribbean or was um, there a large Asian community at that time or did they come later? There was, there was, there was, there was Asian community yeah, there was around there. Yeah, there was. As well, yeah, yeah, because even when we went to school, mm. you, you know, we had... It was still fairly mixed in terms of, yeah. mm. you know, because the, the majority... Yeah. was West Indians. Mm. West Indian, mm. yeah, yeah. Uh, majority mm. was West Indians, yeah. Uh -huh. A few Indians, but there was a lot of white people there for many years mm. as well as mm. Bruce Grove. Mm. 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 Yeah. Most of the yeah. shops on Normanton Road was owned by mm. white people and so forth. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. And I think um, um, Tommy Das was the first black man to have a, a, a grocery shop. shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, even when top of the road, they used to have um, mm. that other mm. white... Uh, I mm. uh, can't remember his name. Um, uh, at the top of the road there, that uh, shop there. Yeah, so it was, yeah. it was a mixed area. It was a mixed area. Yeah, it was well mixed. It was well mixed. You know, a lot of black people there, and mm. uh, yeah. especially yeah. around the norm into the area. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you had a lot of white people. I mean, yeah. look at Sharon Morgan and all yeah. those. Yeah, mm. You yeah. know, there was a lot of white people. Yeah. Right so there. it was quite. It was more mixed in those it days. Was, yeah. It was. It was. It was. Then it was in later years, the eighties and nineties, because the the. There was a baseball ground close by, football, Derby football ground, football yeah. ground, and yeah. uh, most of the house was built for the for the normal workers of, yeah. of because it, you had British Rail and mm. all that cylinders yes, yes, yeah. and all those companies mm. there, so yeah. all those houses were built for them. So there was a lot of white people in that yeah, area. Still. Yeah. Mm. It was cool. a very nice area to go. Yeah, 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 it was, yeah, it was yeah. Yeah. We always used to go to Arboretum Park. It yeah, was a, yeah, a nice yeah, mixture, yeah. Of, mixture of people, yeah. white yeah. and blacks there. And mm. It was a well kept mm. park mm. and all that. So mm. it was a nice area to begin with. Great. So growing up in that area, obviously, when you became musically aware, when, when I mean, you mentioned Castro was the main sound mm. system which mm. started in the 60s in Derby. Um, when did you as youths become musically aware and interested in music? Well, <laughs> I mean, I, have to, I, I don't know, I don't know. I would say I was more interested in like going out to places like such a, as blues and all that. Lot, yeah. Because I was only about, well, probably about 14, 15. Mm. And I was, I was out in blues all night. So, so there was a big Shabin stroke yeah, blue, yeah, blue yeah. scene in, there was a big in Normanton, Pierre. Yeah, yeah, Normanton, Normanton. There was always blues around there, yeah. and you know, um, we we I used to go to all of them when I should be in my bed. Yeah, you know, I mean, so but, you used uh, to creep out. I blues. used, I used, to, I used. To, <laughs> once I go out, I'm out all day, and. Sometimes I don't even come home the next day. Right, and so know. and I was only fourteen, fifteen. Fourteen. Yeah, yeah. So this is like early seventies. That was early seventies. Yeah. So yeah. name some uh, famous blues that were around in those times, or they're probably known by the street they were on, or the yeah. owner that yeah. used to yeah. own Be them. Beecher Street used to be a few on. And there was, yeah, there was street. Which Beecher street? Street? Beecher Street. Beecher Street. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Cambridge. There was Cambridge Street. Yeah. Um, and. There used to be um, a calf 
on um, Pear Tree Road with this, uh, well, what's the guy name? Um, um, Hurl. Uh -huh. Hurl, he used to own a blues cuff on, on Pear Tree Road. Right. And, you know, we'd go in there, have a night time, and, yeah. you know, we'd spend all night in there. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, yeah, I mean, within our area, there was always... Always a, a few blues. Yeah, yeah. Now, there's going to be a lot of people who may watch this video and they don't know what a blues or a shabine is. Well, and now, um, if you, now I, I am aware of the fact that back in the 60s, 70s and 80s, sometimes there was hostility about, you know, people of colour going into discotheques or nightclubs. So I, my understanding is one of the reasons why blues and shabine started was because you, A, you felt safe, B, you could hear the music well, you wanted to hear. But if you want to elaborate well, for the viewers what a blues or a shabine is. Well, it's partly correct what you say there, but mm. I mean, in Derby context, there's only Havana. Mm. I can't remember when that came along, but mm. you used to close about 11 o'clock because of... Obviously, not the Havana, before. the famous Havana Club. Yeah, that was the only black club in yeah. Derby. Yeah. And what was the guy's name? Who you saw in Havana? Ricky. Ricky. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and most uh, most cases, the clubs used to have to close around eleven o'clock. So, mm. what do you do after eleven o'clock? Mm. So most. So it was always uh, always blues. at someone's house. At somebody's yeah. house. So yeah. blues was in a house or a <laughs> cellar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, whichever you what you, you want to call it. Basically a house. It yeah. Was, uh, it was basically yeah. a house. Because we had quite a few. Yeah. Because it's like he says, I mean, you know, Havana at them times, they're it's under time. ordinary clubs. They, they used to shut about 11 o'clock. So and that's only when people after, start so warming up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so what do you do after that? Yeah. So we all go to blues party mm. um, at somebody's house. Yeah. There's always a blues party there. Yeah. And... Um, that's how we... we, we so played. what was the setup uh, in the blues? Was there a sound system in there? The yeah, there was, a, there was a sound in there. Um, you, all, you had to pay to go in as well, didn't you? Well, I don't, in I some don't, of them. In some of them you had to in pay. In some of them, Most yeah. of them was free and you were sold, they sold drinks. They sold drinks, yeah. Mm. When we started, uh, we started having um, blues. Mm. It was just... Uh, that was down Cambridge. Yeah, it's free to go in and mm. we we'll sell the drinks. Yeah, so you make your money out of the drinks and stuff. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And, and that used to be packed out till the early hours. Mm. And, and where else do you play um, reggae music? Mm. Mm. So mean, mo most of the other clubs are. Uh, um, you them. couldn't go in town and hear reggae no, music no, in no, the discos no. and no, no. and was there any hostility I mean very when young so. black men wanted to go into town in the very 70s and so. 80s very much so because we used um, well if you if, if we was going remember when Havana when Havana was on we used to go there was a lot of black people would go to like Pink Coconut right you know um that's another famous. That, that's another famous white, white club. White club. Yeah, white club. in Derby City in, Centre. In Derby City Centre. Yeah. Until until the period comes where where yes they'll go there to a certain time and then they'll always come back to the Havana Club. Okay. As well, but there was a lot of trouble out there as well mm. with the white guys. White guys, and there was the, a bit of racism yes, in, in yes. the city centre. In the city centre, yeah, yeah. We do. I think I think that that used to be the sort of soul disco scene, which mm. Mm. it's it's completely different from the reggae scene. In mm. the, I mean, mm. uh, yeah, but in in those days, there before before we started going to blues and all that, like there, it was always going to the the, the disco scene, which was like you said, the pink mm. which was the other one. Coconut. That was on um, no, bottom of a... Bottom, um, yeah. Um, anyway, you had Pink Coconut, yeah. Pennine. Mm. There was a, a club at the Pennine, I can't remember what that was called. Mm. Run by the Pennine Hotel. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was mm. part of the Pennine Hotel. But for the for the black music scene, and yeah. Tiffany's, wasn't it? Yeah, Tiffany's was. So like these yeah. are all mainstream, mainstream like discos, yeah, mainly yeah, white crowd in the centre yeah. of Derby. And Cleopatra, yeah, Cleopatra down um, mm. Badminton Lane. So yeah. there's always were in the early mm. days hostilities between mm. black and white simply because um, you know 
they didn't want a lot of blacks in those places. And the door times. policy as well meant you could be dressed up to go and then yeah, they make some yeah. excuse not to no, let you in. Uh, I don't think that's the reason why we went into reggae music. That that was a, a whole different scene, scene from that altogether. Because yeah. mm -hmm. um, a lot of my friends at the time, they, they was into Northern Soul and they used to go down Cleopatra's. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I used to go to Cleopatra's for a little while in, mm -hmm. in that scene. But... But the reggae scene has always been, um, oh, so it was only Havana, or later on, you hired to all, mm. yeah. and then you, or we went to weddings, funerals, mm. christenings, christenings, that's where it kind of organically developed over the years, yeah. and um, yeah, and uh, Castro, and there was other um, smaller sound systems like, uh, but, but we used it with Havana. Used to be Dallas's club, Carib, innit? it? Well, yeah, that um, came up, that came at a later date, then. Yeah, mm. they they used to we used to go there, but mm. wasn't for sound systems. No, it was no. um, a DJ there. Mm. They used to play mm. reggae and soul and mm. and, 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 and mm. you know. And yeah. but, but there was a lot of there was a lot of the the Havana guys used to go there. Yeah, and we used to get a lot of stick. Um, you couldn't do no smoking in there, oh, and okay, okay. you know the yeah. the 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 owner was, you know, we we, we, we sometime one day if it was a nice family. Club. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was a yeah. nice family. Club. But it was our cousins, isn't it, the Dowsers? Yeah, and mm. I suppose you're lucky because in the seventies, having a black club, I mean, most a lot of towns ever had that. No, so no. So Havana no, no. was Hav iconic. Havana, in Havana, Havana is the iconic one. You would. Um, relate to yeah well then like i said later on we had dowsers club the carib yeah, yeah. Um, carib club carib club yeah which was a nice club and mm. as well you know i mean mm. eventually you know um the the owner um know that there was a lot of these guys who come up but you couldn't do no smoking and anything yeah, like yeah. That. well i think when it was castro's uh was there um, resident resident DJ yeah, there because yeah, yeah. Havana never had its uh, own PA system in there, mm. so they had so to have a sound system of in some yeah, sort. Yeah. So, mm. when did Havana start, by the way? Do you know when it opened? Mm. No, it was before. <laughs> no, it was long, long, long before us. Maybe so maybe sixties. Yeah, 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 so. yeah, okay, yeah, late yeah, sixties. Yeah. So basically, you're growing up in Derby. You can, you can try to venture to the city centre discotheques, but sometimes there's hostility and sometimes you don't get to hear the music you want to hear. Mm -hmm. So the blue scene, which are basically illegal nightclubs in a mm -hmm. house where you pay to get in or pay for drinks, and there's a sound system in there playing mm -hmm. reggae music till, I understand, six or seven in the morning oh, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes yeah. even yeah. later, even than, later that. than that. Yeah. 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 And there was a few of them in the Normanton yeah. and Peartree Norman area. Cambridge, yeah. um, you also had the, one of the first black clubs, the Havana, which started in the 60s, mm. where you could hear music. But even there was restrictions. It closed early, 11 yes, o'clock. Yes, yes, you couldn't have a little smoke, yeah, smoke or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So kind of. Well, you're not was supposed to smoke in there, yeah, but yeah. Um, you know, there was a lot yeah. of that. Yeah, like, yeah, too. So that was basically the restrictions and why, obviously, the, the, the blue scene was there. So that's, and obviously at this time you've got sounds, early sounds like Castro, which started in the 60s, mm -hmm. and one or two other sounds. So what was the um, beginning of your journey? I think, Cliff, before the camera was on, you mentioned the story about your first equipment and stuff like that so and that was how how the, the beginnings of in force if you like so do you want to share with us um yeah. that kind of how how the idea of a sound system started well yeah i mean um many years before um my uncle was emigrating to canada and he had a radiogram uh -huh. in the black community it's almost every house had a radiogram of some mm. sort yeah when my uncle first came from Jamaica, he used to have his radio gram and he played blues records and all that kind of stuff. Blue beat. Yeah, blue beat and all that. And um, he emigrated. He, he left Derby and went to to London. Yeah. And uh, when my father drove us to London to see him off yeah. from Southampton, mm. he used to be on ships in those days, not on an airplane. <laughs> okay. Okay. My uncle gave me his radiogram, but I said to my uncle, how am I going to get it back to Derby? Um, because it can't fit in the car. 
mm. anyway um, so I stripped it down took the turntable and uh, the amplifier and the speakers out shoved it in a box and brought it back to Derby in the boot of the car wow. leaving the old framework of the radiogram what year was this then roughly this was about 1973 73 yeah yeah so Bought that back to Derby and uh, in my woodworking class at uh, school. Yeah. That was Dale School for Boys uh, way back then. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I had a good wood woodworking teacher um, that allowed me to build the casing for the turntable and the casing for the, the amplifier and the casing for the speakers. Yeah. And uh, when my elder brother was 21, well, in, in the meantime, I used to, Lloyd bought a lot of records, mm. he, you know, uh, he used to go to, I think it was Mackie's shop on, on Mackie, and yeah. then, um, mm. so there was a black record shop yeah, in yeah. Derby mm. in the 70s, Mackie, and the other guy there, what's his name, he used to have a garage at, uh, at uh, oh. he used to have a garage at, uh, where on, Utoxter Road, Utoxter Road, Mr Newman or something, yeah, like somewhere like that, yeah, yeah, anyway, they used to have a record shop on Petri Road, Normanton Road, and Lloyd used to buy records there. Mm. Yeah. I remember when my brother was 21, he says to me, he asked me if I could play at his birthday party. He was, he was 21 and Scotty, um, what's his called? Scotty, what's his first name? Michael Scott. Michael Scott and my brother was 21. So they wanted a birthday party. <coughs> and they asked me if I would play there. And I says, I've never played at a disco you know I've been mm. just playing Lloyd's records in my bedroom like. yeah yeah so I went and got a few records from Mackie I think he used to have a record shop down Pear Tree Road mm -hmm. and uh, yeah played at the party with me one speaker box and uh, the little turntable and whatever mm -hmm. and it was so packed out and it was really good yeah so yeah I got the taste of um, the success of that night and uh, everyone kept asking me days after I uh, went can you play at my party? Can you play at my so party? So this was in a house you played? House party, yeah. House party. I mean, um, yeah, you know, birthday parties yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah, I took it up and then that's where we start. And then um, we decided to, after a while I spoke to my brother here when he came back uh, from wherever he was. and Because uh, <laughs> he was always all over the place, London, Leicester, wherever. Uh -huh. And... Uh, I says, oh well, me and my mates went down to watch a movie down the cinema. It was, it was Clint Eastwood, and it was he was the Enforcer. So we'll call the sound system Enforcer. So this Enforcer was named after a Clint Eastwood film yeah, called yeah, Enforcer. Yeah, right, right. And uh, and uh, then I started to build the speaker boxes. Right. Um, and where did you kind of like? Um, so this is the you're still using the 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 Gram equipment that your uncle yeah, gave you. Yeah, I was you. using that. I just yeah. And you're building boxes for the speakers. Yeah, well, yeah, I started uh, yeah um, building speaker boxes because obviously um, playing in halls and playing in bigger venues, you need uh, um, the proper equipment. Yeah. And so, and it needed a bit more money as well because yeah. I was an apprentice. Yeah. And then so we, there was me, Lloyd, Brendan, Whitaker, mm -hmm. who was part of with us, Enforcer, mm -hmm. and so they would always bring me the money and then I would design and build the speakers boxes and you would play that like I said locally to begin with um, house parties um, mm -hmm. weddings christenings so this was like 73 74 yeah through yeah th no no the 73 and 74 was like the, the initial stages yeah, yeah but we really didn't really start playing until after about 70 in, in the larger venues yeah until around about 78, going on 79, 80. 78, 79. So that's when Enforcer, with the bigger equipment, yeah, well, started playing yeah, outdoors. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So in those days, I mean, obviously, um, you didn't just rely on the, the gram equipment. You had to, you had to kind of upgrade. So when did you start upgrading and buying amps and preamps and speakers well, and stuff? What year was that? Roughly? Yeah, well, probably from 70, cause 75 onwards, yeah. I would say. Yeah. Because obviously I was an apprentice and earning some money yeah. to do that. Mm. And uh, I remember um, I was living at my dad's at the time. And uh, when my dad used to 
go to work on night, we had a big bathroom about the size of this living room here. Mm. And my dad used to come in the morning and he'd go to the bathroom and see these big things being assembled in the bathroom. I not believe it. I mean, uh, there was four foot by 24 inches by um, two foot wide boxes in yeah. his bathroom, four of them being built and mm. painted and all this kind of stuff. And yeah. you know something, I've got to give credit to that because he allowed me to build these PA boxes in the bathroom. Right, so you had a sound system equipment everywhere in your family house? No, no, it was just in the bathroom. Okay. That's where he allowed me to build them and assemble the first four reflex on the grey mm, ones. Mm, mm, ones. Mm, so I built four there and then yeah. I kind of felt sorry for my dad then. And uh, So yeah, I'm about 18 now or whatever. Yeah. And um, so I decided to yeah, um, go down to the housing association and see if they'll give me an house. I want to move out of my dad's house and all yeah, this kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, they says to me, uh, when I went to the interview, oh, we've never done this for anybody before, but we're going to take a chance on you and give you an house. And it was down by on Cambridge Street. Street. In Normanton. Yeah. And um, so we got our house down Cambridge Street and we shipped out the, moved out the boxes from my dad's bathroom and mm. into Cambridge Street. That's where I completed building all the other boxes. Mm. Um, the PA smaller ones, all of them, mm -hmm. and that's where we used to store them. So we built a quad. I built a quad box and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. But it was mid range. So how you know, like in Derby? I mean, I've heard of all these legendary names like Barracuda, Lynx, and Legs, and the people in the African Caribbean community that were well known for building amplifiers and stuff like that. Where did you get your amplifiers from and your speakers? Was there anyone in Derby that was making no. them or did you have no. to go out of town? No. No, I used to buy Celestian speakers, which we use for all our base quad boxes. And you could buy them from the shops? Yeah, there used to be an electronic shop on, um, on Badminton Lane. Badminton Lane. Mm -hmm. And I got all the Celestian speaker. Start with a with a reflex quad boxes, mm -hmm. I used 15 inch. With a... With the quad boxes, which was big like wardrobes, they mm. use 18 inch, and um, and uh, yeah, so we got all the, all that from them. Um, mm. Now, we the amplifiers which we use was transistor transistor amplifiers, mm. um, which um, normal bands would use, PA bands would use. Okay, okay, um, but like. Like Castro and all those, they used to have their amplifiers built with all those, all those valves. valves. Yeah, yeah, from these from legendary from the, people yeah, like yeah. Lynx and Barracuda. Or some people used to go to Jar Tubbies and yeah, 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 yeah. 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 They, they they had the valve system. Okay, but when I, I didn't have access to buying the valve system and all that kind of stuff. Mm, there, but, mm. So I went transistors. Yeah, and I I used the PA which. Um, which um, most bands would use when they're playing live on stage kind mm, of stuff. Mm. And uh, I, we had about, um, probably about 12 transistorized... Six, six in each case. Yeah, yeah, uh, transistorized um, uh, amplifiers. amplifiers. Mm. That, that was basically for the, for the bass, well, for everything. Yeah. But we had special, there was a chap yeah, called yeah. Mackie, um, which... Mm. He would build the, the transistors. He would build transistor. It was a yeah, but it was for the mid range, wasn't it? No, but but that it was like um, an equalizer, um, which he would. Uh, uh, yeah, you're would talking build. about the preamp. Yeah, the, the preamp. The yeah, preamp. The preamp. Yeah, what Mackie would build. Yeah, but didn't he build us a, a six hundred? Yeah, he had a, yeah, yeah. Well, well. He, had, he had a we had a six hundred one there, which mm. would, which would normally that would six hundred watt amplifier, amplifier yeah. which would normally control the mid range and so forth. Mm. And <laughs> all the all the heavy ones was by the by um, transistor. transistor. But he also built um, like an equalizer mm. um, preamp. Preamp, what we call yeah. it, preamp. So Mackie was the owner of that record shop. No, no. no yeah, Mike, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, but after. He, he, after he finished that record shop, I think he sold it to Mr. Whatever. I um, can't remember his name, but anyway, mm. he went into building um, amplifiers. amplifiers so with, with so this was a local guy uh, yeah. from the older generation. Yeah. No, it was, no, it was, it was, it was, it was our generation. He's your generation, our, but he was technically. Not. But it was technically because he used to build amps for a few few sounds down London 
as well as Birmingham as well. Yeah, yeah. So you, you, you okay? So you had someone with sound system knowledge about building amps. Oh yeah, yeah. In yeah. Derby, in Derby, yeah, because yeah, most course. most towns outside of London, Birmingham, they never had that. They'd have to go to no, Birmingham no, or London. No, but you had a Derby-based yeah, man, Mackie, that so, could build your amps. Yeah, sometimes our amplifier or or, or our preamp would be messed up in it, wow. and and he either would have, he he would service it and and get it sorted out for us yeah. and and if not it will go to that Nirvana to play the dance yeah and he'll come down there and do the fine tuning and yeah, all that he's yeah. very good at okay. he's very good uh, yeah yeah so you're very lucky because you've got an amp builder in yeah, derby yeah, right yeah. and you've got you you even had a black record shop in Derby yes, back. Yes. Was that black record shop yeah. open in the seventies or the sixties, or was it like before? That, that was before, isn't it? Well, it was open in the seventies because mm. um, because you like I, I can't remember this chap name, but uh, yeah, like I said, he owned a garage at, uh, mm. at uh, what you mm. call it there. And um, so Mackie was one of those who owned that record shop at Petrie because mm. I used to mm. buy records mm. from Mackie in the. Was it Car was it like Scar, Blue Beat, or well, everything Reggae? That he, well, imports, everything you can get from Jamaica. So seven can... inch pre's you could get in yeah, those yeah, days yeah, in Delta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't have to go to Nottingham. No, 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 no okay, not at all. Okay. I mean, I don't think I've been, we've been to no. one record shop no. out. We no. only used to go to Derby only... and London mm -hmm. and Warrington. Yeah. 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 But that, that, the only time we went to London yeah. was when he had a record shop. Ah. Yeah. When he had a record shop, <clears throat> then we used to go to the wholesalers yeah, down in yeah, London yeah. and get all the yeah. pre-releases yeah, and, yeah. and all the... Mm. Top. Yeah, but yeah. Mackie... Cool. But Mackie be, basically he, was your yeah. technical man, you yeah, didn't have to yeah. go nowhere. No, no, you don't have to go built, nowhere. He built all the preamp and yeah. he built he the amplifiers if you wanted as well. Yeah, so yeah. we mm. built a, one for all the mid-range speakers mm. and uh, mm. the preamp, yeah. which designed to your mm. what, what you need, so you had a mm. treble the deep bass and mm, you could yeah. manipulate the sound to some, like, some yeah. degree. Yeah. So, you know, while you were growing up and while Enforcer was being developed or even slightly before Enforcer, did big sound systems come and play in Derby? What no. was your experience? Well, the, well no. the, the, Castro was there. Yeah. Castro was there. Well, was out there. of town ones from no, London no, and Birmingham, no. did they used no, to come to no, Derby? No, 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 no. Not, not, not really. Um, no, even when Castro was there, there wasn't big sounds coming in from outside, was it? There was only one that used to, when I was about, when I was about 18 or something. Mid-70s, yeah. This was about 78 or whatever the case yeah, is. Yeah. I did go to Havana and taking, remember Quaker from Birmingham. Quaker, oh, City. Quaker, Quaker City. City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quaker and Castro, but mm. Quaker always used to wipe the floor with um, with Castro. <laughs> you know. right. it, but it Quaker was the only one that probably was a start of the yeah, yeah, that yeah, was the yeah, first yeah, one yeah, I yeah. So there wasn't really a long history before the 80s of a lot of out-of-town sounds no, like Shaka, no, Coxon, no, Jungle no, Man or whatever no, coming to Derby. No, no, so no. you never had that no, influx no, of sound. So no. your main inspiration was, was Castro, basically. Yeah, yeah but also, uh, yeah, I mean, um, Castro was, was the, the main, main one. Main the main, so the main any, any sound what came to Derby, mm. Castro was the one what... Because he was a resident DJ, that's yeah, one yeah. in Havana. Yeah, because that was going to be my next question. So, you started the sound, you, you know, got the equipment and everything. So, I mean, in those days there was no sound tapes, was there? In the seventies, no. you know, no. like in the eighties, you used to get Shaka Coxon yeah. tapes and Saxon yeah. tapes and yeah. Coxon, yeah. you know. But in those days, no, there was no sound tapes. No, was there was right. no Black Pirate radio stations, yeah. right? Yeah. So that was what I was going to ask you when you started um, Enforcer. How did you develop your style? Was it through listening to Castro, or you know? No, I mean, no, no. The thing is, you know, every because sound has a style, don't they? But back in those days there, um, everybody practically was roots, isn't it? Yes. Was, was roots and culture. Roots and culture. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, I mean, yeah, you'll have the lovers rock and all that lot coming through, but the majority of people was roots and culture, uh -huh. you know what I mean? Yeah. So you can imagine the sort of music, what we was playing 
in the early part, it was pure roots and culture. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, well, I mean, the thing is, um, I, I didn't go to a lot of dances no, where I know Castro you... would play like at Havana, mm. because obviously, you know, growing up, uh, it's only when I started to play, I, I used to find it. Uh, I used to play more for entertainment to house parties. Mm. Mm. What people wanted to hear, whether it's a bit of soul. Mm. a bit of ring and so mm. forth so mm. it was yeah. never you could test the water mm. well if you're going to play at a wedding and play at a birthday party he, I, I wanted to play to the audience really yeah. now when it came to playing against sound, oh, system, sound system then that's a whole different genre that mm. will play roots music yeah mm. music mm. from Yard pre release, mm -hmm. especially to cut dub plates, yeah, which Lloyd was more specialized on. I would focus on the birthday parties, the weddings, and so yeah. forth. Yeah, not to say I, 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 I couldn't do that, but yeah, I he, he, there was the jug, there was the house party side of Enforcer, then there was the sound clash yeah, side yeah, of Enforcer, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And the thing, because when I opened a record shop mm. and I had a recording studio, mm. I started to produce recordings as well okay know. okay then when it was coming when it came to playing out of town and playing against other sound systems all who came into town Lloyd was the one who who mm. done that and, and when it came to weddings and so forth I would concentrate on that mm -hmm. so it, it, so um, where we started once we played Castro a, a few times we started to go out of town and play. I think one of the first venues we went was outside to Nottingham, was it? Mm -hmm. We went to play big, one of those Nottingham Sound or Leicester. Which Quaker, Quaker City. We I mean, Quaker. I'm not, not Quaker, Earthquake from, from Nottingham. We, yeah, uh -huh. I think it was possibly Earthquake from Earthquake. Nottingham. Yeah. And uh, yeah, um, yeah we, I think we, we sort of, it was a good dance, but um, we kind of destroyed them on that evening. Yeah. There, so yeah. that gave you the sort of stimulus to go on and play mm. further mm. and wider. And so, and um, everywhere, everywhere we went. When I say destroyed, was that was musically, not yeah, musically. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Musically, we played. And that music that, and that was that was what it was like back in those days. It was like a Man United versus. Yeah. Versus away, uh, yeah, home, away, home and away, away yeah, 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 and um, well, I mean, you you had places like Leeds, Gloucester, you know, um, places like that. When we used to go there, you know, these people, they they won't they won't even go in the dance until we come. That's what I want to come to, mm. but before I come to that, so you mentioned that Enforcer, as well as having a sound system, had a record shop. Well, I mean, the record shop came after, but like, um, like once we was a sort of established doing all the, because mm. we was getting a lot of birthdays, weddings, mm. you know, doing all. So you're getting a lot of, a lot of uh, bookings for yeah, house parties. Yeah, quite, quite. A lot. Yeah. So how you no, know most not mm. just not house parties as well mm. because like I said, weddings in in like um, in venues like uh, Pennine Hotel and. And wherever the rent a hall like yeah. that, the, the community centre. Mm, yeah. So we would. I know the hotels yeah, so, as well. So it's not just in the house and that. I mean, the house we only played in Cambridge Street. We only had blues yeah. in Cambridge Street where we we was yeah. living there. But all the other venues we played at was like um, a Janta, mm -hmm. Pennine Hotel, mm -hmm. wherever they hired a hall for their weddings or their christenings or whatever. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, and our box looked pretty and nice and clean and everything. So yeah. it was. Yeah. Someone was telling me you had red, gold, and green LEDs. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah we, all, uh, well, we had stripes on it. Red, gold, and green stripes on the yeah, boxes yeah. and everything. And it was yeah. always not, well. And not presented. forgetting our, and not forgetting our, our beloved um, line of Judah. Painted on the speakers. No, was, the line of Judah was, the Judah. Was our 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 the van the van <laughs> the the seven and a half ton? You had a seven yeah. and a half ton van with a line of Judah painted on it. So well, when not, you the la, not the line of Judah, but well, our van was called Judah. Judah, okay. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, you know because we we we've been all over in that van. Mm. And we had it for a good while, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. It was a good yeah. old van. Good old van. It was so, a box van. Mm. Um, seven and a half. 
Mm. So, you know, kind of like now, obviously, you, you, you're playing the, 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 fa- the functions, the family functions, and you're now... How did you build your name? How did you get these bookings out of town? Because, like I said to you at the big, um, when we chatted earlier, any sound that's come out of Derby, if you mention it to anyone, everyone sings Enforcer's praises. You know, Enforcer was the sound that put Derby on the map. Yeah, well, how did you start that? I mean, you started the sound. Um, you know, how did you market yourself? Well, or how did you get your booking? How, how, did, that, how did that uh, fan base from in Leeds and other places and Sheffield, how did that start? It, it, was, it, was, it was weird because, I mean, you know, we all of a sudden we had all these um, <coughs> these top signs. No, like, Mac, Mac himself, uh, he knew Fat Man. Yeah, yeah, Fat Man. And, and he, Mac, he, he used to build, like we said, um, systems for everybody. For yeah. And he was into the music scene himself. Um, and uh, he would arrange certain things like we played Fat Man for the first time in Havana. In Havana, yeah. So, so Mackie arranged that dance with Fat Man. I think he did, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. uh, and in Havana. And it, yeah, we had a very good night with him. Uh, uh, you know, obviously Fat Man is a, was a sound oh, to, be sound. Res- mm. to be respected, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. we respect him. He's a nice guy and all that. And uh, we put up a, a really good show that night, and everybody enjoyed himself. There mm. was. There was no fighting, no arguing. What year was this roughly? Mm, that was about the 80s. 79, 79-ish. 79. 79. So was that the first big sound you played for Yeah, that I mean, yeah, Fat it was, Man. Yeah, it was um, well packed out as well. Mm. Um, then we played Quaker as well, and then we went to Birmingham and played Quaker. We played the young boys from there. Young mm-hmm. Lion, which was a very top sound. And this is what, 79 or 80? Yeah, I um, can't remember the exact year, what but I mean, it could be, Young Lion could have been yeah. around about 1980-ish. Uh-huh. Um, okay. 80, 80, okay. Because, yeah, we played Young Lion around about that time, because yeah. that's when I opened my record shop, 1980. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and Young Lion was a, very, a top sound, up and coming sound in London here. Mm. And uh, I don't know who arranged it. Uh, uh, arrange that dance uh, whether it was castrated well, well, well even... it was, a lot of, a lot of people d- did start to hear about Havana so, mm. so you'd have even the guys then for from where Leeds or or Birmingham or Manchester or yeah. wherever yeah they they heard of the the Havana club yeah and they they'll hear shackles playing down there and they they themselves would phone or come down to yeah to the to the club and try and persuade the owner to give them a, a, a date to, so that they can play and down. And, always, yeah. and they always yeah. wanted to play the. And, they all, and and all these all these sounds wanted to play Havana. Yeah. The, no, not because only Enforcer was there. Yeah. But everyone had heard of Havana. They heard of Havana. And it was a venue to play. It was a. Yeah. It was. It was a. It was a venue well, to play. Yeah. These sounds from out of town won't come to Derby. To play anybody, they wanted to play in force. Yeah, exactly. They wanted to play in force so, because I mean we travelled as well because we mm. played Shaka in in I would come I would come and, mm. and we played mm. Shaka in Derby. So yeah. so um, we put up a good showing of ourselves. Mm. Um, mm. So these initial dances when Mackie set you up with Fat Man in seventy nine, mm. and then when you played Young Lion in 1980 yeah. um, you kind of like made an impression with these out of town sounds yeah yeah, yeah, well, yeah. we was making an impression before all that but um mm, mm, and mm. word gets around and like yeah. it says i mean mm. one of the first out of town gig was in nottingham when we mm. played um, earthquake earthquake mm. they're from nottingham yeah, yeah. and yeah. Uh, so we you know and traveling to the places we played in bristol uh-huh. mm. we do, we do, gloucester who did we play at Bristol? There's Enterprise, Jaloco, there's... Um, we didn't play another sound system in uh-huh. Bristol, but someone hired us to play at a function. Oh, okay, yeah, and yeah. And it was yeah. packed out and word get around. Oh, because that was... So it's functions where we didn't play another sound. Mm. We used to play to entertain. And yeah. sometimes other sound system, when they play at some function, just play one type of music, which yeah. mm-hmm. kind of bored people to death. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But mm-hmm. when we came along at a function, mm-hmm. we'd play Lover's Rock, we'd yeah. play 
a few roots music yeah. for the people yeah. who wanted to hear that. So it was a, a mixture. We had a, a, de- mixture. a good DJ. We had a good mm. DJ. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't. Um, we wasn't rude and crude with our DJing because it can. When you're playing against another sound, it can be very confrontational. Yeah. But when you're playing out at a wedding, you have to be respect the audience. Of course, and children, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. So entertain people, and we got a re- reputation for entertainment. Mm, mm. So we was well sought after all over the place. Yeah. So, so basically, you played with Fat Man and a few big sounds. You made a name for yourself, and you started getting invited to sounds, uh, to dances oh, yeah. out, out of town, yeah. from the impression you made in those dances, yeah, yeah. how you p- played with those sounds. So mm-hmm. the name got around. And another thing that helped um, indirectly raise your profile was in your hometown, every, people from out of town always wanted to play in the Havana Club. Yes. Well, so yeah. if they played in Havana Club, they would also indirectly play with Enforcer. Yeah. And another way of them you know, getting exposure to Enforcer yeah. sound. No, no yeah. problem because, I mean, it was Friday nights was the, the nights that the big dancers was. And in Havana Club. Yeah. Although Castro was a um, resident DJ there, yeah. Castro would very rare play on a Friday night. Uh-huh. It was always us. So, and, um, yeah. so you, you basically, another thing that helped raise your profile is you would always play the visiting sound in Havana. Uh, uh, always, yeah. yeah. Always. And that's how they heard you uh, about you as the well. The only time, the only time we wouldn't play is if something was wrong with our sound. No, I mean, no we would always be playing our sound. Oh, oh very, yeah. Oh, very, yeah. very rarely anything was wrong yeah, with our yeah. sound. But, yeah, 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 yeah. But in yeah. 1980, mm. when I opened my record shop... So you opened it in 1980. What yeah. was the name of it? Black Star Records. Okay. I used to start promoting... We used to start promoting our own dances. Okay. And so with with our sister, used to be a singer as well. Mm. Uh-huh. Um, uh, my late sister. We used to promote dances... At venues, Pennine, wherever, mm. Mm. and have our own dance. Mm. Not, oh, a da- okay. not not necessarily a dance with another sound system. Yeah. But we had, we did. Who did we play? A junta. We played. Um. We that was one of our promotions at a junta because there was. Uh, they just opened. It used to, it used to be an old theatre. Uh-huh. Um, picture us or something, and then um, they wanted to to get known to to compete with Havana. Mm. So they asked us to play there, and I think we played there with. Another sound, which was that other sound? I can't remember the sound that came down so long ago. But it was filmed by the BBC, you said? Yeah. It was filmed by the BBC. Um, I need to it? find out that. And <laughs> I'm we, sure you would. In the Normanton Community Centre, we played there on one of the... Yeah, we played at uh, Norm- the Normanton yeah. Community Centre. Um, but yeah, right. so we started to promote our own dances as mm. well. So 1980, Enforce, mem- uh, the founders of Enforce uh, have got a, 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 a record shop, Black Star Records. Mm. Was that in the Normanton Pear Tree area? Yeah, Normanton, Normanton Road. Normanton, Normanton Road. Road. And Road. What, what, how long was that open until? Uh, from 1980 to 1983. 83. Okay, so in that, having a sound system and a record shop means you've got access to the latest music the latest, yeah, we, and links to dub plates. Yeah, yes, yes yeah. Yeah, we had links to dub plates. And that was um, mainly through, um, like I said, a, a good friend of ours, mm. Maki, who um, he, he, knew he knew a lot of artists. Yeah. A lot of, mm. lot of people mm. in, uh, in the music business. And, and, so. and when, we, when we went to, when, when uh, we could, went to, get records from um, Jetstar and things like that, uh-huh. you know, we'll always get talking to uh, f- uh, them guys yeah, there, like and they'll say, oh, Barrington Levy's over here, Dennis John Brown, Thomas is over yeah. here, or whatever. Dennis Brown, oh, or, yeah. or, or Castro or, Brown as or, well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we used to uh, yeah, they say they, they're, in the, they're in England, yeah. and we'll get hold of them. And we'll go and cut some music. Wow, wow. Yeah, 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 so, you, so you've got access to the latest music, you've mm. got access to dub plates, you've mm. got connections with wholesalers like mm. Jetstar in London. Yeah, yeah. They'll tell you when Hawkeye, the artists are in Hawkeye town. Hawkeye Records. Hawkeye Records, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you could get your dub plates. Go get me dub plates, yeah. So that was my next question. Um, back in the day, dub plates weren't what they are nowadays. Nowadays, dub plate specials are where the artist sings the name of the, the sound, sound yeah, system yeah, on yeah. the tune. Yeah, yeah. Back in the day, though, dub plates were different. My understanding, and 
please correct me if I'm wrong, is if you've got a, a hit coming out like, um, um, I don't know, Dennis Brown's Revolution, you'll get a cut of that but mm. different instrumental maybe mm. a different mm. cut to it that mm. is not commercially available well, well, what, what it is I mean just to give you one example is that like say Dennis Brown yeah Kessler Brown um, which was Dennis Brown's brother yeah would do the PA and, and, and all that for his brother yeah so if we met Kessler Brown he'd have all the master tapes there yeah and we'll book an appointment with him to go down to the studio yeah, and he'll have his sixteen or whatever track tape, and he'll run it off a dub plate, and <coughs> without, and you can put on it whatever you want, but it'd be just a different version of what's already of out. what's commercially, commercially sold in the available. record shop. Yeah. So it's an exclusive music, yeah, yeah, exclusive. because because so, if you if all the and to the viewers that I don't know about the competitive side of the music amongst reggae sound systems, if every sound system went to the same shop and bought the music. All the music was sound the same, so part of the competition was getting exclusive cuts to the music that no other sound could no, get. You have to know the producers. Really. Yeah, yeah. The producers are the one who's, like I said, Castle Brown was Dennis Brown's brother, so he yeah. was producing. Either, although Dennis Brown records had been made, he had his label, Yvonne Special, that was all Castle Brown used to own and all mm -hmm. that. So you meet the man who's producing the music and we'll just book a time down the studio, mm. come along, we'll go along and we'll get what we're paying for. Okay, so... So, so if, you had, if you had 10 cuts of Dennis Brown, even yeah. whatever, he'll give it to you for whatever. Yeah, whatever so this was the exclusivity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, otherwise, what's, if there was no dub place, any sounds would go to the same shop, play well, the same music, well, this, and there's no difference well, between them. There's no competitive Yeah, well, this is, this is what happened. Um, one time, we had a... We was playing... Um, I don't know if it was um, Castro, uh, Castro Sam became, had a lot of youth that joined it as time went on. Yeah. And they seemed to have, one time we played them, they seemed to have got and um, bought dub plates which was generic. Mm. You know what I mean? Generic. That a lot like, of sounds have. Yeah. Yeah. And there was we, nothing exclusive yeah, nothing about exclusive. them. Nothing yeah. exclusive. We went to, when we went to London, we met whoever and we got the same down dub place, but we had things um, done differently on them. Dubbed onto the tune. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So when, so we got that in our box. So that means anybody who play whatever yeah. generic tune, we'll mm. just come back with them and take out an exclusive one, yeah. which is basically the same. But well, some it's been DJ DJed over by yeah. a popular one of the top artists. Yeah, and it puts them to shame. Yeah, because they, they haven't, they can't play that. Yeah, they no. think they got an exclusive. Yeah, but they, they think they're the only, they think they're the only one. They've been sold a pop, really. Yeah, because whoever they bought from told them, yeah, nobody else has got this. Yeah, 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 yeah. But when they played and they're ranting and raving, oh, we got this, and you just took take your art. But what what I used to do it as well. When you're in the music business, it's not so much about when you're playing against another sound system, hmm. having. A, a, a different version of what they got it's ideal yeah but what I was doing in the early days we could have the same generic as them but we had an echo chamber and we had what I would do when we're playing the record like, like twin tape we didn't have mm. twin turntables no. mm. but I would make it sound like. I, would, I would play a bit of their record and then I'd just cut in another on the LP so I'd track off another record yeah. and it made it sound like it's exclusive to us. Okay. So you add a music you use that sound effect. Live, to it. yeah. Just like yeah. years years later it came along when they're doing all that um scratching music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well I started doing something similar, similar way. Like that, yeah. So yeah. even if you played a uh, one of those generic what you call it, same as ours, mm. we'd do things which make it our Output sound your little different. tweak to yeah, the tune. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we, we invested in equipment to allow us to do that. Yeah, yeah. So so basically, you have got obviously music from the, from the from the record shop. All right, you've got uh, you, but you didn't just used to basically stay in Derby. You used to buy wholesale music from yeah. from from London record shops. Yeah. So how often did you used to go London to buy every them? week? Every, every week, week. At, least, at least once a week. At least once, once a week. week. Uh -huh. So you went yeah, to London. Yeah. You but got also, your wholesale. But you also got people traveling around. Delroy Wilson used to come down. Yeah. Bigger artists and yeah. you had other artists with mm. their with mm. their exclusive. These come to Derby yeah. to my shop there, yeah. and uh, yeah. 
to see me. Yeah. And these come to my shop there and um, and take out what they've got and if there's anything which I don't like, I used to just purchase from them. Yeah. So you've got exclusive music, you've got exclusive contacts with dub plates. Did you ever cut a special where the artist is saying in forces ja names? Thomas. Ja Thomas. Thomas. On, on the tune. Ja Thomas. Remember that tune? Um, what's it called again? Um, a lot of people come in. Hold on. I think we may. Have, I think um, we may have done uh, on on would, uh, on one or two occasions. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. We did. Um, we, we, yeah. So there was one and two specials where Enforcer's name is on the yeah, is on the dub yeah. plate. It's been such a long time. I can't exactly remember what they were, but I think. Uh -huh. We didn't do a great deal because... Um, in those days it wasn't special, it was like just dub plates. It was dub plates and uh, like I said, that it was more focused if you had a dub plate and you had mm. one of the top artists from one of where they shook it. You know, but Jeff Thomas was thinking about Enforcer on, on that music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was because the rhythm. with Greensleeve, yeah, we yeah. went to see... Um, yeah. Remember, that was um, Jack Thomas and it done with Enforcer in it as well. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. So, so you so had, did, so you had, had one it. and two. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We had one or two and I mm -hmm. But uh, mainly it used to be um, if, if you, if um, say if we met Dennis Brown, say, then yeah. um, if, if we was buying some of his plates there, we would have yeah. had him to say something different. Yeah. Um, or that. Mm, mm. We didn't have a great deal of it done, no, but... Uh, yeah. But, um, so that's that. And um, I know the other sound guys would probably <laughs> you know, kill you if you didn't mention them. So what were the... And I should have... And apologies, I should have asked you to list the, the members of the sound. So who were in force, so if you want to <coughs> list the crew that were with you? There was me, Cliff... Brendan, uh -huh. Gary Isaacs, yeah. Tipper, yeah. Graham, mm. Bradley, Rudy, Rudy, yeah. um, um, Rupert, Rupert, yeah, Steve, um, Steve Bradbury, Steve Bradbury, yeah. and yeah. Um, Claudie, Claudie Barnes, yeah, mm -hmm. and um, what's his name? Henry, Henry, Henry used to drive us about a lot in yeah, the, Henry Cooper used to drive us about a lot, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. and. Uh, he helped me a lot. And um, what do you call it? Um, couple of them, couple of them. Uh, Jimmy Osani. Yeah. Bless his soul. He's. he's but the but the main core was mm. me, Lloyd. There was only about five. Me, Lloyd, Brendan, mm. Rudy, mm. and um, Gary. Gary. And Gary. Oh, okay. A lot of as oh, much, yeah, much can fit in the van as as you when can. We, when yeah, we yeah. I mean, when we when we was travelling, you know, I mean, there were a world of people. I mean, when you look at it like now, would we would we uh, put all them guys in the back of the van like? No, no. You couldn't get away with no, that nowadays. No, you no. couldn't get away with it, and it was it, it would have been too dangerous. Mm. But obviously, we I mean, you know, we've been to dances and we've gone going to Birmingham, for instance, and we stop off at the at the um, service so station, mm. and then all of a sudden the the back will open up, and all these. Rusters will just come pouring out the back of the van, you know, and everybody's looking around, flipping. Hey, what's going down? Like, you know what I mean? So, you're building a name for yourself. So, your feedback from people from out of town. What was it about Enforcer that they liked? I mean, people can talk about equipment, the selection, how this style, how you introduce the records, your MCs or singers. What was it? What was your feedback? What were you were getting about Enforcer? Why was it so popular in Yorkshire and other places? Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, musical wise, yeah, the music is the first. Thing. Musical wise, you had exclusive selection. Yeah, they couldn't. Well, I mean, when we don't, no matter who we played against, and like like Cliff said, I mean, you know, it's. They can have the same music as us, mm. but it's it's how you play the it, delivery, how you deliver it, and delivery. things like that. And so you you kind of like you had a unique style of delivery. We had a we had a unique style. I mean, we, wherever we go, you know, you know, at the end of the night, you know, the the well, I mean, you could hear it from from the crowd when we used to play 
the place used to go absolutely wild. And was the mic man something to do the, with this? The mic well? man, the mic Who was man, the main mic man for Enforcer? Claudie, Claudie was the Claudie man. Barnes. No, Claudie. We had a quality of sound. The reproduction of the sound was quality yeah. to begin with. So it sounded you could, crisp. You could yeah. hear what the what was being sung. You could hear what was being DJed. And we was entertaining. Mm. Mm. Entertaining the people is the most important thing. So, mm. you have, And you have to be able to distinguish from, like I said, function, playing after function, mm. or playing against another sound system. Mm. Because although both sound systems can play entertaining music, some sound system was play would play roots or or oh, not, not, yeah. where mm. we would mix it up. Mm. Mm. We would play roots when it came to the part of the evening where it was you see who's got a better music mm. because basically mm. when you're playing against another sound system, mm. it's who's got the better music, who's got the exclusive music, mm. but also who could deliver clean, crisp with power. We had a mm. power, of, mm. and, yeah. And, um, yeah. And like I said, we didn't engage too much in all the the foul languages and all yeah, that kind and of the stuff. Yeah, the profanity. Mm. Yeah, and but sometimes we was dragged that way to defend ourselves. Yes. Mm. But um, some sound system they got a reputation of um, just being rude, being rude and cruel, yeah, yeah, like yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, something yeah, that yeah. we was against. Yeah. Gains, but yeah. obviously we, we, we could you, stand out you, were, you never indulge yeah. in slackness. Yeah. No, no, we, no. We, we, and we respect people like mm. Fat Man. We respect Shaka because mm. there was people, there was a sound system that had been there, done it, mm. Mm. and they would bring us onto their bill, mm. and we would respect that. We wouldn't try mm. to disrespect them in any way whatsoever. We the respected only way, them. The only way we would disrespect them. Is musical wise, musical wise, yeah, but you, not, you, not not verbal. No, not no, verbal. you would let no. the music do the, the talking. The music, yeah, not the silly talk. jokes and no, stuff no, like they no, do no. nowadays. No, 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 yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. No, no. Any sound man looks at how they do sound clash mm -hmm. nowadays, and yeah. some parts mm -hmm. of what they indulge in, they no, no, just don't no, like. No, 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 no. But you know, um, what were some of your anthems, enforcer anthems, and artists that? We used to draw people. What was your favourite artist that you had the most dub plates of? And what what tunes always used yeah. to, dr you know, make yeah. you win clashes? In the early stuff? days, it was Kunta Kinte. Kunta Kinte. Kunta Kinte, yeah. And, um, and uh, Aswad. Aswad. And, and Aswad, yeah. Aswad, yeah. 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 And, um, Warriors Charge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Johnny Clark. Johnny Clark. Johnny Clark. I mean, we was playing a lot of those sort of music. Twinkle Brothers. Yeah. Twinkle yeah. Brothers. You know, um, Prince Farai, but, uh, but yeah, and, and Winston Rodney burning spears. Yeah, you know, we was well. I mean, that was if you if you listen to all them music I just read off, they're all roots music. Yes, that, so you were that, essentially those, a Rasta sound. Yeah, yeah. Those 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 music there was to play in a clash yes. with another sound. The mm. Kunta Kinte one would, would be I, 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 iconic. Kunta Kinte. Kunta Kinte. Anyone Kunta who doesn't Kinte. know Kunta Kinte, look it up. Kunta yeah. Kinte reggae we, on YouTube, mm. wicked. Um, we, uh, we had mm. lots of cuts of that one. Mm. But yeah. when, was that, when we was playing at the Soul Wedding Function, um, yeah. Ain't No Stopping Us Now used to be our signature tune. Ain't No Stopping Us Now. Yeah, okay. So, mm, okay. That used to be our opening mm, theme yeah. and you could get the dance floor filled with that. Mm. Mm. And I was speaking to um, Errol Squires. Okay. Yeah, he was telling me that you had a good link for Al Campbell dubs Al as well. Al Campbell as well, yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Al Campbell yeah. was one of our, was one of our sing signature tunes mm, as well, mm, yeah, mm. yeah. Right. Well, before we go into some memorable clashes, you, you were also uh, minor celebrities as well on national TV because um, you actually, Lloyd and the crew, played a game of pool in front of the national press and TV cameras King with Charles. Prince Charles at that time, who is now oh, yeah. King Charles, yeah, yeah. Uh, back in 1981. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to play you a clip of that news report, vintage news report from 1981, and we'll come back to it to discuss. So here's the clip. 
That's why. Hey, I put one of them. World champion. I'm on it. No, I ain't got no more. I'm on it. 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 I'm on it.
Name me some of the most memorable clashes. Again, I, I've got to thank Errol Squires. He mentioned yeah. a couple, but before yeah. I mention those, mm. anything um, that comes to mind as some of your memorable clashes? Um, um, Fat Man. Fat Man in Derby. Yeah. In Derby. Yeah. Um, Jar Tubbies. Jar Tubbies yeah. from London. Yeah, from London. Where was that dance? That, that was in Derby. In Derby, yeah. Um, Shaka. Jar Shaka. Yeah. Down in um, um, High Wycombe. High Wycombe, okay. And in Derby. Yeah. Um, there was I, mean, I think I think I think almost every all those all sounds we play. It was it was yeah. it was great. It was, it was it was you know I don't think we've had one. I think the only one that bad experience that we've had was um, with with our local. Uh, um, Protagonist, uh, we had a terrible Castro that night where it was being a bit rude on the mic and all that. Which with sound system was that? Castro, but Castro, yeah. All the rest was 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 um, confrontational, but it was good music. It was a, mu a musical confrontation. Yeah, I mean, if if you go mm -hmm. to say Leicester or Nottingham or Birmingham, yeah, and you come away at the end, you're shaking hands and you're having a laugh. That, that yeah, was, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. There was, but uh, there was one occasion when we played against uh, Castro, which wasn't a very nice experience. Were they your main derby? You know, in your I hometown, think that's what, yeah. there, there's always a a competitor, a rivalry yeah. in derby in your hometown with an exam. Was Castro your main rival in derby? Yeah, mm. I mean, Castro himself, the man himself, is a very respectable guy, and. Uh, I Roy, you, you, I Roy yeah. you, you sometimes you get others that uh, uh, a bit mouthy and a bit disrespectful. And, mm. and, uh, well, I think and I, th I think I think uh, we, we we expect that because you know there's no way another son is gonna yeah. disrespect me, yeah. and I ain't gonna give them the same what they give us. But, uh, of course, but, but it's not it's not us who'll be starting it first. Yeah, no, yeah, no, at all. But yeah. so all our cl wherever we travel to, we yeah. came away. Yeah, and uh, with a good report. And uh, when we went back the second time or whatever, you'd always have a crowd of people waiting and oh, yeah. you know, cheering mm, you back mm, because mm, you know mm. through their previous experience. Mm. So yeah, all all those sounds were played. Yeah. You played, with you. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think for for me. Yeah, personally, playing against Batman was um, was the highlight. The highlight High because level. they was very well respected yeah, in the quality of their music. Sound. Yeah, they played good music. Yes, mm. you know they played good music and they entertained as well. Mm. And it was always respectful and um, yeah. I mean that's what we try to. Mm. Emulate really. Mm, mm. Shaka was another. Shaka was Shaka quite. Good Shaka was good, but he had his roots. He was more roots. He, roots and yeah. um, no, I mean. but he was very respectful because <coughs> he looked at us as like up and coming, and so therefore he had his own style. I mean, so we, we so played. We played some some sounds, and mm, you know yeah. I can. Uh, there's a sound called Lord David. Lord David. Where were yeah, they from? They were from London. Lord yeah. David. Uh -huh. um, very good sign as well, you know. They, I mean, he emigrated to Canada, I think. Yes, yes, yes. But you know, I mean, the the, the majority of signs what what what's what 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 um even now today Java sound system. You played against we Java. We played Java as yeah. well, you know. I mean, Young Lion was a Young Lion. When, they, when we played against Young Lion, yeah. that was a nice entertainment. They, they're yeah. very Young Lion was. Obviously, like it's yeah, the young but, boys there. But well, you got to remember as well. I mean, we played sound like Mafia Tone. Mafia Tone from Mafia Birmingham. Mafia Tone from Birmingham, you know. Um, and I'm sure we played with Mwambasa one at a time. From, yeah, South, from yeah. London. From yeah, South yeah. London, Mwambasa. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, those 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 sounds there are legendary sounds, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you know, you know them sounds gone now, but um, I tell you. Those was a mm. back in those days. We 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 held our own. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we yeah. was respected, and, yeah, and like yes. I said, we respected all the other sounds there because they had something to offer, and we was all, um, you know, we was all doing the same thing. Really, yeah. basically, mm. I mean, the way reggae music sort of it was back in Jamaica and all that. It was always um, places where you, politically they could send a message through, the, you know. Where people could hear through the rec music and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
but I mean, like in England here, um, whether it's Derby or London, um, where you, the venues which you could play at was limited in mm. the, the bigger scheme of things. So um, yeah. and to play reggae music mm. um, the way we did it and the way other sound systems did w yeah. to give entertainment to the black community was, yeah. you know, it was um, what was needed. Yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah it, it sort of developed over the years into everyone now promoting their own sound by hiring halls and venues and yeah, yeah. But in the early days it was yet yeah, for us in Derby it was just Havana yeah. and what we say blues or blues. house parties yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I heard um, um, that you, uh, you played Jungle Man yeah, Jungle and, Man. and basically um, according to by all accounts you you actually Mu annihilated them in the clash. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What happened? What happened during that clash? And where was that? And what year was that? That was at um, Winston Green. Winston. That was Green. in Birmingham in that their was backyard. In right in the backyard. Well, the thing is, yeah, it's just like I was saying earlier. I mean, yeah. they all come out with music that they think was exclusive. Yeah. And uh, the biggest shame is when you play about ten cuts of what they think was exclusive. So, what kind of exclusive music were they playing against with you? Well, then, whatever. Yeah. Dub music they played. Yeah, and they said, you had oh, counteractions to yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, whatever they came out and played, um, almost every one that they played, we could come back with a ten versions of whatever they played. Each. Okay, so they you you basically and answered them back with music. Yeah, and the yeah, thing, yeah. The thing is that that's embarrassing because can you imagine being in a nightclub packed out? Yeah, and you're saying this and saying that this is exclusive and all this like yeah, and then yeah. all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden we wrong. come back with ten then. You know, where do you, where, 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 where do you, what, what year was this, uh, roughly? What was it? Yeah. You had it, in, you had it on here. So that, that's, that's the way that you do Yeah, that was in Winston Green. And I also heard that when you played against Shaka, you basically, um, um, basically answered him back by playing back in his style. Yeah. So Kunti how did that was come Kunti about? Kinti, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, the thing is, I mean, Shaka was a very heavy, heavyweight sound system. Mm, yeah. Still is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the reproduction of his bass line was second to none, really. Yeah. And um, we delivered a, a very powerful bass line. He, he was using like the traditional <coughs> valves. Yeah. And we we came extremely close, if not some records better than. Uh, you know, with a heavy bass as well. Yeah. But Fat Man always used to be the one that had quality of reproduction of the sound. Fat Man yeah. sound was, and I think we did really well with Fat Man. Our quality was just as good. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, the case is the thing is, I don't know how Shaka got on with Fat Man, but we got some plates off Fat Man because we got on well with Fat Man. So yeah. when, if we was going to play somebody else, yeah. we'll go to we'll, we'll go to so and so yeah. X Y Z. So it wasn't it wasn't. Um, I mean, we got we got some plates off Fat Man only only because he would he him and um, Mucky no um, <coughs> Prince Jummies. Uh -huh. Prince Jammies, yeah. so he had that link with Prince Jammies. Yes, because Rips, Rips, when he was with uh, Fat Man, mm. he, and even when he started Unity, he always had that connection with Jammies. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that, that's why, that's why Fat Man was such a good sound because Jammies. If you listen to how Jammies play, and yeah. you listen the music what Fat Man plays, yeah, it's on the same level. Yeah. But for some reason. Fatman music when he was playing the sound system like I got, you know, boy. But the thing something. is, yeah, I mean, if we was going to play Shaka tomorrow, say... Yeah, you know, how would you it, prepare for that? Well, the thing is, I mean, if, you know, Shaka's based in London, isn't he? Yeah. And then we'll be talking to other sounds in London. Yeah. And they'll know what music Shaka are playing all that. So we just try to go and meet someone who's got something different. Different, yeah. Or they'll yeah. say to us, oh, Shaka's always playing this one here. But yeah. Shaka used to have exclusive music which we couldn't get. Yeah. yeah. But if you ha if you happen to have one particular music which another producer had, then yeah. he'll say to you, "Oh, he's got this one, but he hasn't got this one." Okay. So, so you should do your homework yeah, uh, with yeah, London Sounds yeah, and yeah. find out what Shaka's got mm -hmm. and get what he hasn't yeah. got. Mm -hmm. I you mean, have to. Yeah. Uh, you can't 
buy generic so it's always more expensive because it's all cost yeah 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 i mean the, the generics are cheap out there in back in the day there where yeah. everybody can have mm. and it's okay to have a generic if you're just going to play by yourself and entertain but when you're going to come up against a very top sound you try to have um something that is almost yeah. exclusive so your connections you. in london told you well, yeah, I mean, because yeah. because the majority of sounds, especially if it's coming from London, they'll all be listening to each other and yeah. they'll all have different um, producers, like Lloyd says, mm. Jammies with Fat Man and mm. somebody else with mm. Shotgun. Mm. Yeah. But they'll all be talking to each other. And if you go to a venue and they're playing, oh, they've got this one here, but they haven't got this one here. So mm. it's mm. a case where doing your homework. First, You're doing really. your homework and preparing yeah. for the clash. Preparing. Okay. Um, did you record a lot of your... This is my biggest, um, my biggest uh, hang-up when it comes to recordings, as Lloyd knows very well with the harassment I've been giving you and the harassment I've been giving Tipper and Claudie, and who will probably be watching this probably understand. In, mm. in, in the time I've known you, Lloyd, I mean, I've known you for a few years, um, mm. on and off, yeah. uh, but recently I've been kind of like, obviously yeah. trying to find Enforcer audio. Oh, yeah. I think I've been phoning you sometimes three times a day. <laughs> yeah, 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 um, yeah. But why yeah. is it so difficult to get Enforcer tapes now? Because no doubt people well, recorded Enforcer I mean, on Ghetto Blasters, didn't they, in those yeah. days? There's no sound recording through the yeah, sound of Enforcer. Yeah, but there's, there's no... I mean, it, it baffles me how these sound got their audio. Yeah. And obviously, back in those days, we never really had. It's a it's, it's a strange one. We we are, we often ask ourselves this because we don't even have a lot of pictures to. Yeah, you mm. know what I mean. It's, it's mm. one of our biggest regret because yeah, exactly, uh, you know, I mean. Because I've only come across one audio of Enforcer, yeah. and that's mm. a six-minute clip on mm. YouTube mm. from 1982, mm. and that's it. And that's it. Yeah. I've asked for for saying mm. a sound like uh, Enforcer. Yeah, you'd have thought that they'd oh. have had some form of archive, tapes, you know, archive, tapes yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, one can appreciate it. I mean, back in those days, was we bothered about all that? No, we wasn't. You were just we, more about the more, night, what's happening on the night. On the night, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean if, if, if you look in Ironside and say, well, Ironside's a good thing. There was a lot of ghetto blasters in There was a lot of ghetto We should have... We should have Claudie Barnes had a ghetto blaster. But yeah, we should have yeah, because I asked Claude yeah. Barnes, and he's because, another guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. but it, yeah. It, it, it just, it's just it's just it's something we do, you know. It, you know, it's even like even photos, even we didn't you know, that. we never had we 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 never had nothing, and that is one of my biggest regret because who would have known that something like this was yeah. going to happen yeah. after all these years. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it, it sure would be a good thing because there's a lot of people out there, you know, you know, Enforcer is a big name. Of course, and you there know? should be his tapes of yeah, Enforcer. Yeah, yeah, it's a big name and, you know, you look back and uh, well, we look back now, I mean, when you the <coughs> dancers that we've been to, and we can say mostly the majority of dancers we've been to was, it wasn't just full. <coughs> It was cock. Yeah, you know and people. I mean? There was also a rumor that people wouldn't enter the dance till they saw you. What was the story yeah. behind that? Well, well, I mean, yeah, for instance, I mean, I know, I know, we used to play up in Leeds a lot yeah. and Gloucester a lot, yeah. and um, and no, we, you know, we played, you know, Birmingham and all, and you know, but Leeds and Gloucester, them Monday they wouldn't even. Come in the dance. Yeah. Don't matter like if we was an hour late. Yeah. And they'll 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 see see the van coming up the road. Yeah. And and that's when everybody go crazy. They say, oh, enforcers here. Oh. That's when they would pay their money. That's and when go they pay the their dance. money and go in the dance. Okay. But they ain't going in the dance until enforcer comes. See. And, and yeah. a sound might be in there already. Yeah. But. They they ain't worried about that sound. Like. Okay. When when enforcer walk through, when they know that enforcer is coming up, they'll see see the the line of Judah the our van yeah. coming up the street. Then they would then they you start terrible. rushing in, say, "Boy, I'm gonna go and get my spot before." Okay. You know, okay. you know. And also, you were a, somewhat of a lady's sound as well. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the girls did love our sound. 
uh-huh. girls who love yeah, us. I, I think if you're an entertaining song, yeah, well, it was very you, entertaining because you you were diverse in your yeah, musical. In, yeah, in the musical yes. We know what we the the thing about enforcer. We knew when to play roots and culture, yeah. and we knew when to play lovers rock. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think in any DJ, you got to know how to mix up your music. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm, mm, um, mm. I mean, no disrespect to the to the DJs today, but if the DJs could do what I done back in those days there where I was toasting, yeah. I was selecting music, yeah. I had to run to the toilet and run come back and I've got to know exactly what music, where that music is in that in that record box. box. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, this is this is what those guys there who does that. I mean, sometimes some of the guys up in Derby call me to do... Um, uh, uh, play on a session for them, you know what I mean? Mm. Guest DJ. Yeah. Now, when I go and play with these guys, oh, well, the Derby, for instance, mm. as a guest DJ, um, you know, not one of them as could trouble me because I was the only one out of probably three, four DJs there um, got vinyl. Right. I got vinyl, oh. so so you know where they would line up their music them yeah. on the computer or wherever. Mm. You know I've got to be working my brain. Yeah, yeah. where is that music? Yes, flashing through it. Yeah, you know, and you know, and I, I could I, I still kept up with 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 them. You know, mm-hmm. you know I knew exactly where everything is, and those guys. Those are who I call DJs, man. Mm, mm, mm. And you know, in Forza, was there one particular MC or singer that stood out? The, my sister. Yeah. Bless her soul. Uh-huh. She was a singer. She used to sing on Enforcer. She used to sing on Enforcer. Uh-huh. And um, what was her name for? for ba- Babette. Babette. Okay. Babette. Yeah. Rest in peace. Yeah. Bless her soul. And um, Claudie Barnes. Claude Barnes. Yeah. yeah. He used to do a lot of DJing for me. Um, hi. I, I I used to do it, but you know sometimes you have to just say you know you 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 do it yeah. because I couldn't be doing that and I'm toasting and there's a record I need to change soon. Then mm. uh, yeah, yeah. no, I have to get to the Claudie mm. Barnes. Mm. Claudie Barnes was a main. Was yeah, the main yeah, DJ. yeah, he yeah, was, was the main DJ. Yeah, yeah. So um, you what was your for, this may be the same question. I was going to say, what was your favourite places outside of Derby to play, and where did you have your most fan base out of Derby, where well, the crowd was very warm to enforce uh, it? Uh, you always have a second home yeah, outside yeah, of Derby. Uh, I'd, I'd say Leeds. Leeds. Leeds and um, Gloucester. There were two places. They, them two places was... Um, and, you know, even them two places there... They had all the big sounds coming to their places. You don't yeah. get don't get them wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, um, I'm sure somewhere on on the Leeds program. Yeah. I'm sure it was me and and Shaka did play on the Leeds program. Yeah. You know, and even little Gloucester there. Yeah. You know, he had big sound, Jungle Man or or Mafia or yeah. Or one so of it's them. not like they were starved of sound. No, they had they, big they sounds, was, but they, they always they, remembered you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. If I'm gonna go there, you know, what I mean, you know, say I'm not going there to play with some dibby dibby sound. I'm going yeah. there to play with a big sound. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. And, and and most of the places, but like you say, for I mean, we we, we had that love and we had that affection mm. with, with with all the other sounds and or yeah. wherever we went. But I find Leeds was the place. Boy, yeah, Leeds was a place for me, mate. You know, yeah, they, yeah. they they they. They, we could sleep over there. They, they, they invite us in, in the house. You know what I mean. Mm. Same with Gloucester. Yeah. You know what I mean. Put yeah. you up for the day because yeah. we used to play. You know, we used to remember you coming from Derby to Leeds, mm. um, and you know we have to get there for what, what roughly around ten o'clock. Mm. So they're travelling, and then set up the sound, yeah. pull down the sound. And then go and play in the blues yeah. straight after that. Mm, mm. Don't get back till like daylight. Daylight. Yeah, and, yeah, and sometimes yeah. we don't even come back. We, you know, because of the, some of the guys over there and 
and or well, you met a girl, you would stay at would stay in their their yeah, yeah. their eyes and yeah, there, yeah. there was a w welcoming, you know. Yeah, yeah. So um, so the record shop, Black Star Records, that opened in 1980. Yeah, mm -hmm. and when did that close? No, it didn't close. Um, I, s I sold that on to um, another person. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So they continued. What year? I, what year was that roughly? 1983. I sold it on. 82. 83. I sold 83. It on, yeah. Okay. Okay. I sold it on, and then I moved to London. Okay. And so yeah, I wanted to. Um, I mean, forgive me if I'm wrong. So so, Enforcer really started in '79. Is that correct? I would say I would say yeah. I mean, in in the form of um, playing at big venues. Yeah, was well, seventy nine, yeah. and then when did Enforcer end? Well, I moved to London in nineteen eighty four. Eighty four. So I'd say about it was about eighty eighty three. Yeah, I I, I came to London in nineteen eighty four. So yeah, about, so eighty three. So, because um, it wasn't my intention for an enforcer to end there. Yeah. Um, but it's just circumstances, really, because uh, I was planning to go back to Derby. Yeah. And, uh, continue with um, a recording studio, you know, but life have its own uh, turns. turns. And um, yeah, I ended up um, staying in London. Yeah. Not going back to Derby. And. Uh, um, yeah, uh, I went into management, um, uh -huh. management, and uh, yeah. and it just sort of petered out over the years. And uh, yeah. Yeah. I think after a while, it would have been too hard to go back into again. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so it wasn't our intention for it to end in eighty, eighty three, mm. but it's just it's just what. So was it eighty three or eighty four? I'd say eighty three. Eighty three. Yeah, because I came to London. Because you came yeah. later on. So do you, there was no dances played in eighty four within uh, no, no, no. no. Okay. No. So we, basically, you had a good four year run with Enforcer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It came to an end, which was like I said, it was regrettable. All good, but it all was, good things come to end. It wasn't our intention for it to end. Yeah. Mm. It's just that circumstances, because. Because Lloyd was already living in London, he already moved to London in eighty two mm. probably or eighty one. Uh -huh. But you still or, came up to play. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. I sold a record shop, and I was going into producing music, which I had produced um, music already. And yeah. uh, I was building a recording studio to yeah. go back to Derby and continue. Mm. But like I said. Um, Circumstances. Circumstances didn't allow me to do that, and yeah, um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. so that's okay. basically what happened. So, eighty-three was the, officially the end of the, the last year that yeah. we we, yeah. we hadn't we played or anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, you okay? We can honestly say we can honestly say that you know. And for us to really put that that door beyond the map. Well, I'm telling you, I you mean, know, we, I if mean, you look at the threads on Facebook, people yeah, to this day yeah, from outside yeah, of Derby. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, mean, I think know. I think it's the case. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it sh we should have gone on longer. We should yeah. have gone on longer. Yeah, and and I think you know, it's just a case of the sudden end because we was on a high in '83 still. Yeah, yeah. we was on a high, mm. and um, and uh, like I said, most. Most people who used to move in our circles mm. knew my intention was to go back to Derby. Yeah. And uh, but you know, you know, it's just didn't happen. And uh, mm. I had uh, one or two events in my personal life which I had to deal with. And mm. uh, yeah, before you know it, time has flown by. Yeah. And I uh, wasn't able to go back and pick up from where we left off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh -huh. um, what happened to Enforcer's um, equipment? Uh, well, we left it with um, um, some guardians over there um, who was part of the sound system, uh -huh. he, he, followers of the sound system. Yeah. And uh, Lloyd, he got quite a bit of records from the record box, but mm. um, the rest was sort of um, 
It just went... It just got dispersed. It just yeah, got, got dispersed, dispersed, you know, I mean... So um, all the dub plates and music... Well, no, know. not the dub plates, oh. but... Um, the equipment and all but that. But the equipment and all that, like, you know, he just went. He got dispersed. Yeah, the thing yeah. is, the thing is, I mean, we had quite a lot of big equipment, and mm -hmm. where I was staying at the time when I first came down here, I didn't have my own place. Mm -hmm. Um, didn't have my own place, there was no way to store it, so yeah. it was being stored at uh, one, or two, one of your people, uh, two people's places back yeah. in Derby. Mm. And obviously, it came a time when um, they had to need a space, so uh, <coughs> well, well, Is that in, so in, in, order, in order for it to pay away, the, the, in people's house inconvenience, they had to do what they had to do, yeah. if they had to sell it or whatever the case yeah, is. Yeah, no, of course. Of because, course. I mean, although the sound, the sound system wasn't a business. Mm. No, it wasn't it a wasn't business. It wasn't a business. It was, um, it was more it, of um, a hobby. A like enjoyment. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. that mm. we had to do. I suppose in, it, sound system takes a lot of investment and all oh, that kind yeah. of stuff. And, mm. but it, you know, today's model of a sound system, you can make a lot of money out of it. Yeah. And we was kind of breaking even way back then. Yeah. But if, it, if I had saw it as a business, um, then yeah, I mean, we could have bought it down here and carry on. But yeah. I, I sort of didn't want to go back into, I wasn't going to be doing the sort of playing against Shaka Fatman and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And um, I decided to go on a different route, career route. Career route and yeah. Um, yeah, and I didn't fancy, um, <laughs> lifting these big boxes to yeah, yeah, weddings yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But in our youth, when we was young, it was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you you got to yeah. travel to meet a lot of people. Yeah, and it was great. Play the lasted. best music on a on a mm. massive sound system. Yeah, it was great while it lasted. Great. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, so none of the music or dub plates are around now. From no, I mean I mean I've I've got I've got music, but I ain't got the dub plates and yeah, you know yeah. I mean? yeah. <coughs> And um, yeah, um, the mission now is Enforcer Audio. So, if do you want to give a shout out and an appeal to anyone about Enforcer tapes uh, that you know? Well, um, it'd be great. I'll be grateful if anybody out there um, could find any pictures or pictures, um, tapes, audio. You know, we'd be well over the moon because obviously. We we never thought about that back in the days, and mm. um, you know when you compare to line now, if I had a sound system now, mm. it'd be all all edited and you know archived. We, we, archived. We'd have had we would have loads of tape, mm. loads of film, mm. loads of picture. So if anybody out there listening or watching this, um, like I said, I'll be over the moon if anybody could come up with some tapes. Mm. I mean, those people that have got live recordings of Enforcer, I mean, we can digitise the audio. Uh, you'll get back your tape. You, If you want it on a CD, we'll put it on a CD. But the important thing is having a legacy. Because it's one thing, people watching this interview and, you know, feeling inspired by the story. But how are they supposed to feel how Enforcer played if there's no audio? And like I said, the only legacy audio-wise, there's a, a few photos mm -hmm. and there's that, obviously, the Prince Charles mm -hmm. archive mm -hmm. uh, film. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if the only audio is six minutes of Enforce mm -hmm. in 82, mm -hmm. that's, yeah, a shame. that's a shame. Yeah. So those people who are watching this, who I've harassed, <laughs> please, now you know how serious I am mm -hmm. about maybe keeping the, the legacy of Enforce alive by, by having those tapes and get in contact with Lloyd or myself, or, you know, Claude, or, you know, anyone else, yeah, um, and, you know, uh, give it, um, obviously, messaging, messaging us on, um, on, 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 on YouTube, or Facebook, and, um, yeah, um, this um, interview will be going on to online uh, shortly, um, so if anyone would like to leave your comments and stories and memories of Enforcer, but also please help us keep the legacy alive by giving us some, li some, some access to some of those recordings, or if you know anyone who has any recordings of Enforcer, please let us know, it would be greatly appreciated. Right, well, Cliff and Lloyd, I've taken up a lot of your Sunday 
this young man on the side has been so well behaved, right, for one and a half hours. I've got to <coughs> shake his hand and say thank you. And um, yeah, before we go, yeah, you want to shake, you want to shake their hands. <laughs> you want to shake. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Well, all we can say, thanks you, very much. Indeed. Thank you. you know and me? just lastly, a message. Whatever message you'd like to give to your fans and the public, your reflections on your life experiences, anything you want to share with the well, public before we end. Well, all I can say is um, it was a good journey and I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for you lot. So the fans. The former fans, you know what I mean? And, you know, there's a lot of memories of Venforza and, you know, especially the ones in Derby, you know, we've put you on the map, you know, and oh, that's all we can do. Stay blessed and respect to the maximum. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much.